Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and I want to welcome you to our Bible study today. We have been looking at this time of the year, the different Gospels that have to do with Jesus' birth. All right, so then we looked at Matthew. We looked at Luke, because both of them, Matthew talks about Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is, he is the king, all right, the coming king. And we also know that he is the Messiah. Then uh, as we looked at Luke, we looked at Jesus as uh, when we study the book of uh, Luke, by Luke the physician, we look at Jesus as the son of man. He is a perfect man. And uh, it's interesting that in the four living creatures that are in heaven that worship the Lord, you have <clears throat> a lion on one side, they have four heads, and it's a lion on one side. Of course, that pictures Jesus as the king and then you have him as the on another side he is the head of a man he is the perfect man uh, the second adam adam blew it uh, but the second adam jesus didn't and then we have today john and so in both Matthew and Luke, we see Jesus coming to this earth as a human baby, uh, the perfect man in Luke. And so he is visited, it, well, he's very humble because he's born in a, a manger where a uh, stall where the animals are kept and a manger would be where the animals are fed, not in a palace. But then later, we don't know how much later, we know that it was less than two years later uh, because the wise men were coming from some distance. Uh, the men that had uh, studied the stars and also the scripture uh, is a possibility they came from India or maybe even uh, today, modern day Iraq which would be Babylon during the time of uh, Daniel, where he was taken captive. Uh, the thing is that there, the kings came to worship Jesus. So Jesus is both for the average person, the actually the poor person, uh, and we see that in Luke, and the offering that they had was uh, two turtle doves, which would be from poor people, all right? And that happened 30-some uh, days after Jesus was born, okay? And they would have taken Jesus to Jerusalem, so he was still in Bethlehem at that time, staying with relatives, no doubt. But then later, uh, when he had, he was a little bit older, uh, he, they had moved to a house by that time. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but uh, was in a house, and it wasn't. He was no longer called a baby, but uh, a child. All right. And just like in English, it has a different significance between baby and child. Uh, he was a little bit older now. We don't know exactly how old. And uh, as much as I've tried to study that out and find out, it may have been uh, at least months, if not a year or more. But um, we consider him still, uh, we still consider that part of the the uh, mangers, not the manger scene, but uh, part of the Christmas story, don't we? Because uh, now a lot of times we said the manger scene, they show, you know, people just put the wise men in there. 
Uh, maybe to be more accurate, we should show one with the manger scene and one with the uh, uh, when Jesus was visited by the Magi, the wise men from the East and so on in another scene. In fact, I've thought before when I put on the Christmas program for our Christian school that we have, uh, preschool through high school, that uh, each year we have a Christmas program, and we try to anyway, and the, but I suggested to them at one time, well, why don't you try to have like the manger scene as one scene, and then the next one would be the scene where uh, Jesus is at the home and in a house, and there uh, the, the wise men could come, and so that could be two scenes. Uh, but we consider it part of the Christmas story, don't we? So we end up putting those uh, figurines together, and the, both the shepherds and the and the angels and the well, and the angels too, and then uh, the star overhead and the and the wise men all as part of the Christmas scene. Well, anyway, that's what we've uh, done up to this point. Now. It is something else in John here that we need to consider very uh, seriously to know that it's part of the Christian doctrine, and we believe it with all our heart, that Jesus was not only perfect man, but he was God. He, uh, the virgin shall conceive. And that doesn't just mean a young lady. It can mean young lady, but obviously it doesn't mean just a young lady because here, and as we looked at it in uh, um, Matthew and uh, Luke, uh, that uh, that she is a virgin, Mary is, uh, when Jesus was born and conceived and born. And so she was just engaged to Joseph, but she, they were not, they had not come together in the final um intimate act of marriage and so now here in john we see that jesus was always god in heaven i think when as a younger child after just being saved and you're learning about jesus and everything you kind of think that at some point he comes into existence no he has always been and so that's what we see here in john let's start off with verse one and we're not going through the whole book of John. We're just doing some verses here from chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, probably not all the versions would capitalize, but it should be capitalized because Word is talking about Jesus here. And the Word was with God. That's talking about the Father. And the word was God. So now the Jehovah's Witness New World Version is very wrong. And please just, oh, I would say throw them out. Now I keep one on the bottom shelf for reference so I can show people that this is what their version actually says. That it says, uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was a God. That's not what it says, is it? Let's look at it again. That is a lie. That is not being true to the word of God and every other version, except for the New World Version, uh, does not put that, but puts was, and the word was God. Now, if you say that it's saying was a God, then you're saying that you believe in many gods. And that's what I point out to the Jehovah's Witness. Now you wanna do it kindly and in love when you're speaking to people, because you're not gonna reach them if you're just, you're hollering at them or you're trying to argue with them or something. But in love, you show them that is wrong. No other version has done that, as far as I know. Yours is the only one. And that, of course, is a lie from Satan because uh, Jesus has always been with the Father. Anytime you want to think about a beginning, 
like the beginning of the earth when he created it. And you can look at our uh, Genesis 1 study. I have Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 online on uh, Facebook, on um, on YouTube, and on our website, Bible-Christian.org. So if you look at that, um, you will see that that is very, very important to translate the Word of God correctly. And we go into, in Bible-Christian.org, we go into many studies, and one is translating uh, our, how the word is passed down to us today. Okay, so uh, Jesus was in heaven with God the Father and uh, also uh, with the Holy Spirit. And that is interesting in Genesis chapter 1. It talks about um, Jesus, or the, bio, the, God, the Godhead. The three in one, the Holy Trinity, says, let us make man in our image. Now, that cannot be talking about the angels because they're not creating. Uh, it's talking about the three, the plural, and the Elohim is a word, and it's plural, but singular at the same time. And so... We we see that, and that is about the Holy Trinity. And so one of the first words of God in the Old Testament, Elohim, talks about a plural. And so, but uh, sometimes the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll say, I've had them come to my door before, and one of them said, well, I know what you believe as Protestants or uh, that there you believe in three gods. And I said, no, then you didn't learn, because she said, I used to be in a Protestant church. <coughs> I think she said a Lutheran church. But I know that that's not what the Lutherans teach either. I said, no, uh, there is one God and three persons. And that's why in the Old Testament, I think it's in Numbers, uh, it talks about our Lord our God is one God. Okay, now this is where the Jewish people, the Muslims and others, uh, they get uh, confused or they don't want to believe because it talks about at least two places in the Old Testament. Jesus this, uh, talks about the sun, kiss the sun lest he be angry with you. And then there's another passage. So they can't say that it wasn't then and the Jewish people, if you go to Isaiah 53, 6, <coughs> excuse me, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have gone our own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I know the Jewish people will try to say, well, that was, that's just the Jewish nation, and, and we're doing lots of suffering and that sort of thing. No, it's talking about a specific man a specific person who died on the cross and that's our lord jesus christ he took our sin and so he has always been with the father in the old testament jesus came and he would appear through the old testament in many different forms uh, but he was there all through the old testament in fact when jesus rose from the dead after remember he was walking on the emmaus road um, there he explained for them at least two hours from the old testament himself it says and uh then later when he sat down they invite, invited him to stay because he would have walked on by he we he wants people to have a perfect uh free will and so he would have gone by and left and but they invited him into their home and then when he was breaking bread with them, no doubt, as he was lifting his hands up as he did before when he would, uh, was like when he fed the 5,000 and so on, and he prayed and blessed the food. As he was lifting up his hands, no, no doubt they saw the scars on Jesus' hands that were still there uh, on his either hands. And, and so they, they realized, and then he disappeared from them. Then they had to go all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the others. But the thing is that um, 
uh, he showed himself all through the Old Testament, many different ways. Uh, I think it just not necessarily in order, but uh, uh, well, Abraham uh, and the three angels, which well, messengers came. That doesn't mean Jesus was an angel, but he was a messenger, and he came. One of the them was Jesus, a pre-incarnate Christ. You see. Uh, possibility of Melchizedek. Uh, we're not sure on that one. Uh, it might have been a man like him because there's no genealogy and and so on. Um, but then also like Joshua, uh, the captain of the Lord's host, he came. And uh, so you see Christ all throughout the Old Testament and appearing as the angel of the Lord to the Israelites and so on. And so we're talking about the second person of the Holy Trinity here when we say in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God, not was a God. We don't believe in gods. We do not believe in three separate uh, gods. It's kind of like uh, it's one God in three persons. And so he fulfills both the uh, passage in Numbers and also in Genesis. Uh, so plural yet singular. You say, well, we don't have anything like, oh, yes, we do. When we say an egg, for example, just these are earthly illustrations, but there's a shell, there's the white, and there's a yolk. But we don't, we don't say, well, give me that uh, three. Th no, no, we say, give me that egg because it's just one. Well, we talk about water. Water comes in three different ways. It can be uh, liquid, it can be in a vapor, or it can be in a solid as it's frozen. And those are just examples. But uh, there are three, yet one. Now let's go to another example. And er any earthly example we give will fall short. But what about ourselves? We have a body, soul, and a spirit. Now, it is possible that animals have a, a soul. That's the personality. But um, we have a body, soul, and a spirit. And we're made in the image of God. So we're greater than even the animals. And uh, we have uh, the body, soul, and spirit. Well, Jesus took on a body. And he had a soul and a spirit. All right. And so... Uh, the three and one, and that's what it's talking about here. Now, uh, let's go on a little bit further. He was in the beginning with God. He was with the Father. Anytime you want to think of as a beginning, even uh, the beginning of creation, all that is Jesus was with the Father, the three and one. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. We're still talking about Jesus here. And John wrote this, and at the end of the book, he says that I've written this that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. All right. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So not only is he uh, the creator, God, he is the one who gives life. And uh, he, the light, uh, life was the light of men. So Jesus is both light and life. Um, when we had um, Jesus uh, revealed to Paul on the Damascus Road as he uh, was going to uh, capture Christians and arrest them and take them back uh, to Jerusalem. He had his credentials from the religious leaders and so on after the resurrection of Christ. And Jesus appeared. It was so bright, his eyes, he was blinded. And uh, so people that have um, had near-death experiences and so on, uh, they talk about this. The light, normal light, you wouldn't be able to look at Jesus except 
that God does a miracle. And uh, God, of course, healed Paul's eyes later. But then if you look at uh, Jesus, he is the light. It says in heaven there won't be any need for uh, the sun. It's not in, the, uh, in heaven, uh, Jesus is the light. Um, now, he may be the light for the whole universe. Uh, the uh, I don't know when God recreates the heavens and the earth. There will probably be suns, which are stars and so on. But as far as uh, we don't need any other light than the light from Jesus. Uh, so we have the light, but then he is the light and then he's the life. Now, as hard as scientists have tried to make life, they can't make life. And uh, Miller, there was an experiment that was done and many experiments since then where they've tried to make life and they cannot make life. Uh, they can't even get close to making life. And when they're honest, they have to admit that. You can go on the YouTube and study that sort of thing. But they claim that they have, but they haven't. They can't make one blade of grass. They can't make one insect they can't make one animal no uh none of that because why because they can't make the life they can put the the compounds together the chemical compounds and so on but it's still not alive why because life comes from god and that is another area that the um the uh, evolutionists the evolutionists have to prove and they haven't been able to prove that life can come accidentally not even the coming together of several cells. Now I have to uh, check the time because I have a different clock here. Okay. Uh, and so we have, uh, he was in the beginning with God. So all three, the Holy Trinity has always been together. Uh, now that's hard for us to think about, isn't it? Because we have uh, a beginning. We had a beginning. Everything we know about had a beginning. And so to think about someone, Jesus, who didn't have a beginning, and the Father and the Holy Spirit, they never had a beginning. Um, now for us to think about something that doesn't end, we can almost think about that a little bit with illustrations. And someone gave an illustration of a, like a, uh, let's say that the, the earth was made out of stainless steel uh, plant, uh, or a planet made out of stainless steel. And, and every thousand years, a bird came along and rubbed its wing uh, on the planet and then flew away. Um, how long would it take for that to uh, disappear? Well, it wouldn't. It would always be there. So... Uh, and the thing is that so we can think about things that go on in the future, but we can't really think about anything that didn't have a beginning. But here we're talking about God. We're talking about God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, three in one. And they never had a beginning. So any time that when he created the earth, well, that's a beginning and something we can think about but not for them. They were already, uh, before the angels were created, they were there. Now, some people say, well, oh, we would have, uh, they would be, no, uh, they would not be lonely uh, because God is, uh, even though he wants to fellowship with people and created us for fellowship and so on, but it's not as if he was missing something or without something, even the Holy Trinity fellowships together. And so um, we look at then as we continue on in this passage, we're not going to get very far because we just want to talk about Jesus. And uh, so Jesus, when he was born in the manger, he was also God and being totally God and totally man. And him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. <coughs> in other words, the people in the world did not understand about Jesus truly being God and taking on a body for us. That's what John is explaining here in his book. And... Uh, 
teaching it. Now, one time I was in a, a Bible study and uh, someone said, well, Jesus was half God and half man. No, that's not true either. Jesus was totally God and totally man. And then another, and I didn't correct him at that point, and the pastor didn't either, and I wish to this day that we had of. Uh, but then there is also another person that were in Bible study, and this person said that, uh, oh, Jesus got whoopings. That would be like spankings, just like the rest of us. And uh, we said, uh, no. Uh, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. And being God, he was perfect. And it says, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus never sinned. And uh, he, because he's God, he cannot sin. But because he's man, he could be tempted in every way such as we, but he never sinned. And so he had to be the perfect lamb of God to die on the cross for us. And so uh, Jesus says he was born of Mary, being a truly man, but also born of the Holy Spirit, born of uh, the Holy Trinity. He was totally uh, God as well. And then we look at... Um, where it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. So now this is uh, not John that's writing the book, but this is John the baptizer. This man came for, uh, for a witness to bear witness of the light, because Jesus is the light of the world, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, John the baptizer wasn't, but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light, it's capitalized again, which gives light to every man who comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Not only that, he came to his own, the Jewish people, and spoke to them. Jesus is a Jew. A lot of people don't even know that. He's Jewish. And so if you're anti-Semitic, you are against Jesus. No, we love the Jews. And God said, I'll bless those who love your descendants. To Abraham, he said that. And I will curse those who curse your descendants. I will love the Jews. And I love Jesus. And we love and we will bless them. And he came to his own, that's the Jewish people, and his own did not receive him. So they as a nation did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood. Now this is meaning that you, another passage that talks about you're born of uh, of man and so on, uh, but you're, uh, but in order to be saved, you have to be born again. Who were born not only of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And so the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Father full of grace and truth. So John bore witness of him and cried out saying, this is he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me. So actually, um, physically speaking, uh, Jesus was born after John the Baptist. But he says, for he was before me. But here again, he's saying that uh, if, how can he be before, uh, after me, and after me, and uh, is preferred before me, for he was before me. So he's explaining too, John the ba baptizer is, that Jesus was always existent before he came to this earth. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace, 
For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. All right. So that's all the further that we're going to go in our study today. And uh, soon we'll start in the book of Matthew and go right through it verse by verse, uh, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. But that will be at the beginning of the month in uh, January. But right now we just want to see Jesus in all his glory coming to this earth, taking on a body like you and I have, at the same time, not ceasing to be God. Now, he did lay aside some of his glory. Uh, <clears throat> on one occasion, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus revealed himself to the apostles and uh, the Father speaking out of heaven uh, right there, and but he became shining uh, as his clothes did and all, and he gave them a little taste of what he, who he really is. Uh, but then he also laid his side uh, where he, uh, as far as he needed to take on a body so he could feel the pain that you and I have, uh, that we will suffer, but he need to suffer that pain as he died on the cross for us, uh, as he would, do later on in his life and then <clears throat> some people leave out the three hours that jesus died on the cross where it was dark for three hours during that time being god and man he could suffer as god for the sins of all the world and the three hours could take hell upon himself and suffer all the punishment our suffering during that time because he's god uh, from every man and every woman from the beginning of time all sin uh it says he became sin for us and that was the only time there's a, a separation of the holy trinity one time we had a person that he left the church because the pastor said that um this was the only time there was separation in the holy trinity was when jesus died on the cross oh no the father could never leave his son and well no he did that because he loves us and he died there for us and that's what i'm sharing right now that if you don't know jesus christ as your lord and savior you only think of him as a man that's not the whole story the whole story is that he is god in human flesh and so that's what we're sharing with you, that Jesus came to this earth. He came to take our place upon the cross of Calvary to die there for us. And if you have not received Jesus Christ as your own Lord and Savior, what a better way to start the new year than this. And that there is no other better way. The best way is to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray with me right now. You could pray something like this. And it doesn't have to be the exact words. And God knows your heart, if you really mean this. You could say, Dear God in heaven. I'm going to keep my eyes open because I'm going to uh, share this with you. Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. That he died on the cross for my sins. And being the perfect Lamb of God, he could take my sins on himself. I believe that Jesus truly died. He was dead and buried in a tomb. And that three days later, he came back to life. And right now, I invite Jesus to come into me and take away my sins and make me a child of yours. I truly believe that he did die for me, that he was buried and he rose again. And I love you, God. I want to be your child. Please forgive me for my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn away from my sins and turn to you. 
and I want to be your child. And just pray that prayer, and then you can pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, if you prayed that prayer, or one like it, and you really meant it, Jesus came into your heart and saved you, and you're born again. And that's uh, why we have John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, and we're going to have to finish for today, but if you've enjoyed this Bible study, please join us as much as you can each and every day. And by the way, we're reading through the Bible in a year. And so uh, today you would be reading uh, First Chronicles and Second Chroni First Chronicles chapter 26 and, and also Second Chronicles um, chapter, uh, well, I, I said 26 in that. Uh, yes. And so First Chronicles chapter 26. And Second Chronicles chapter 26 from the Old Testament. Of course, we were looking at John chapter 1. All right, the Lord bless you, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. If you enjoyed this Bible study, please share it with other people.